This week, we are studying the letter Sadi. Sadi, the T-Z-A-D-I, Sadi, and it's pronounced Sa, Sa. Okay, so Sadi means righteous, righteous. All right, so let's start with our prayer, and then we'll get started. Everybody pray with me, please. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, asher kishanu b'mitzvotah v'tzivanu al divrei Torah. Blessed are you, Lord our God, everlasting King, who sets us apart by his establishments and established us on words of Torah. So, Sadi is the 18th letter in the Aleph Bet. And it has a gematria of 90. And I just thought it was really cool that, you know, 18, you know, um, I, I showed you a, a while back how we can break that number down as one plus eight, you know, um, and it would equal nine. So I thought that was kind of interesting that the 18th letter also has a gematria of 90. So the one plus eight is nine, which would be you know, like the 90. So the, um, Sarah has Isaac when she was 90. At 90, if you remember from a few weeks ago, it's a person that's bent over or humble, Lashuach, to pray constantly. It's like they're, they're, they're constantly in that position of, of humility and they're praying constantly. Um, high is the Hebrew word for life because its numerical value is 18. The het, which equals eight, and the yud, which equals 10. Our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, are mentioned together in the Torah 18 times. There are also 18 passages in which God communicates with Moses and Aaron equally. God's name appears 18 times in the Shema. There are 18, quote, commands in the Torah regarding the building of the Mishkan, the tabernacle. God's name appears 18 times in Psalm 29. And the Amidah that we pronounce on Shabbat the Shabonai Esrei literally means the 18. Now, originally it had 18 blessing, blessings, but today it actually has 19, but it's still called the Shabonai, Shimona Esrei, excuse me. So, like I said, Sadi means righteous or righteous one. And on the left, we see the Sadi, on the right side, and then the final sadi, and it just is elongated. In the Zohar, the sadi is said to conceal the secret of the Torah. At creation, each letter of the Olive Bet came before God and asked for the world to be created with me, the sadi said. I'm the righteous one. God responded, yes, but because you're righteous, you must be hidden. Therefore, I cannot create the world with you. Sadi is concealed. Righteousness is concealed or hidden so that we all work towards righteousness in our life. It's not something that's overtly, um, oh, that's righteous. It's not something like that. It's something that's concealed, something that's hidden. The wage of a right of the righteous leads to life. The gain of the wicked is to sin. Proverbs 10, 16. So there is that hiddenness, that sod. And we've talked about sod before, that secret. Oh, it's doing it again. That secretness, that sod that is hidden. And we, and we have to dig a little deeper to get to it. So 
in Genesis 6, 9, it says, Sadiq Tamim, pertaining to Noah. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a righteous man, a Sadiq Tamim, a perfect. Tamim is perfect. Tamim, um, so it's a perfectly righteous person. Noah was a righteous man, blameless in his generation. Noah walked with God. Um, some of the things that I read said, the reason it says in his generation is because it says if he had lived in, say, Abraham's generation or, or one of the others, you know, one of the other patriarchs uh, generation, he might not have been considered, you know, perfectly righteous. But in his generation, he was considered blameless, but he was perfectly righteous, tamim. And we've, we've talked about tamim at, at uh, services and Tom means perfect, but it is a, um, for a time, you're Tom when you're doing uh, the things that God has called you to do so that it's like what's going on in the heavens, you're doing them, okay? So it's that, that perfection comes when we're doing Judaism, when we're acting out those things that God has us act out through the festivals or through Shabbat. So it's that moment that you're you're perfect in God's eyes because you're doing his will. You're doing his Torah. You're, you're functioning in that. So Avram, it says Avram, uh, Abraham believed God and it was credit to, credited to him as righteousness. It was simply that he believed God. Genesis 15, 6. The He'amin, is, the word is faithful and trusting. Um, I'm sure, like some of you, when you when you've worked or when you've um, done a, a kind of like a testing of trusting each other as employees, where uh, somebody falls, you know, they, they ask you to fall back, and your your coworker will be there to catch you. Okay, and Sometimes that happens when, um, I guess it's like family counseling and stuff that they say, okay, uh, are, you're not really trusting each other. So we're going to do a little exercise. And the little exercise is, you know, the husband can stand there and the woman falls back and knows that the husband's going to catch her and vice versa. The husband falls back and the woman is there to catch him. Well, that is, that is what the word is there. It's credited. He believed he was faithful and trusting. He trusted God. And that trust, that faithfulness in Abraham, in Abraham credited him with being a righteous man. He trusted. He knew God was there for him. He knew he could fall on God and God was there to hold him up, pick him up, walk with him. So um, as we've been going through the Alephet, Okay, it's important to see the placement of the letters. So the letters that precede the Sadi are the Samech, the Ain, and the Pei. The Samech, we learned, means uphold or support. The Ain may, means the eyes. And the Pei means the mouth. So... If you want to, you can look at it kind of like a little story that's being told. We can learn that when we uphold or support the Torah and God's ways in our life, through our eyes, meaning what we take in, what we choose to see, and our mouth, what we choose to speak, we're in essence trying to lead a righteous life. And it kind of goes back, I mean, I just thought that was really pretty because it's like, you know, we, we ourselves have that within us to, you know, what we're taking in through our eyes, what we're putting out through our mouth, we have the ability to reach towards righteousness, to seek that righteous living by what we're taking in and what we're putting out. 
And, you know, it kind of goes back to that teaching we did a few weeks ago about how the eyes and the ears and the mouth, they're all like doors. They're like gates, you know, to what comes into you and what you allow in and what you allow out. So, you know, to seek after a righteous life, we have to, you know, support the Torah through our eyes, through our mouth. And, you know, I know it's not here, but through our ears also. In Genesis 1-1, Haaretz is the first time that we see uh, the word. Uh, it's the seventh word in Genesis 1-1 that we find the Sadi at the end of Haaretz. And it says, in Rashi's comment in Yahud Shemoni on the Torah, says, he declared to his people the strength of his works. That is, he gave an account of the work of creation in order that he might give them the heritage of the nations. For should the peoples of the world say to Israel, you're robbers because you took by force the lands of the seven nations of Canaan. Israel may reply to them, all the earth belongs to the Holy One. Blessed be he, he created it and gave it to whom he pleased. When he willed, he gave it to them. And when he willed, he took it from them and gave it to us. And I, I just thought that was amazing to see that because that's the, like I said, the seventh word in the scriptures, okay? And it's Haaretz, the land, okay? And we know that, that, the, the nation of Israel, the, the land of Israel, are a picture of what will be in the kingdom. And I just think it's amazing because here he's saying, and, you know, when some accuse you of taking the land, you, Israel, will say, God gave it. God gave it to us. So... One of the words that um, starts with uh, Sadi is the word Selem, image. So it's the image of God in Genesis 126, and it's spelled Sadi, Lamed, and Mem. So as we've been going through the letters and we've been learning about the different meanings of the letters, we see Sadi as righteous. Lamed, we learned that it means learned or learned one. And mem had to do with the waters, but it had to do with the, the Torah. And in this case, it's the final mem, the closed mem, which meant, you know, like a digging after, you know, a, 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 the secrets, the, the secrets of the Torah, which we saw at the very beginning that righteousness is like this hidden, I, I want to say like a hidden gem. Okay, within the Torah. Well, here we see the word selim, image. So it's a righteous, learned, if you will, waters or Torah, the secrets of the Torah. So it is the Torah that we study and the Ruach that opens our eyes to see the hidden truths. It's when we study and use other principles to re reveal and understand the deeper meaning of the Torah. So we're made in the image of God when we're, when we're righteous or we're doing something righteous by living and doing the Torah. We're made in the image of God when we learn God's ways and we walk in God's paths. We're made in the image, image of God when we seek the living water and the secrets within the Torah. So, you know, it's like God made us this way, but it's that image that, that God put into us, that, that image of being like God is the ability to seek after that righteousness, that ability, you know, to, to walk in the paths of righteousness. Another thing pertaining to Selim, okay? So man 
is Bet Selem Elohim, in the image of the entire spiritual realm. So we have a spiritual side, just you know, um, that God has given us. Man resembles all of the spiritual roots, and he has within him traces of all of the ten statements, the sefirot, what are known as the sefirot, the, according to the Flames of Faith, 1910. Man is suited to resemble his creator, and through this he achieves the secrets of the higher form, selim and namut. Okay, so it's like the, the image and the likeness. The essence of the higher Selim and Damut is in his actions and of what good is it to be like the higher form, the form of his limbs, and to not resemble the creation creator in his ad, actions, according to Tumer Devorah. So we, each of us, okay, we have that essence within us of the Selim and Namut. And it is through our actions that that higher form of, of the tselem, okay? It's us acting out. So we have that within us, but it's acting out those things of the Torah, of, of God's ways, of what the creator has put into us. Another word that I thought was important to share with you was the word cell. And it is, cell is shadow or shade. And again, it's righteous and learned. So we can see that a righteous and learned person is in the shadow, in the image of God. And every time I, I think of cell or shadow, I always think of uh, Talit and the reason I put those pictures there with the men having their, their being under a talit, but with their arms extended, because it reminds me of uh, a bird's wings, you know, and, you know, like God just holding us under his wings and taking us, you know, within his wings, within his talit and covering us and protecting us. So, Psalm 17, 8 says, guard me as the apple of your eye. Hide me in the shadow, in the cell of your wings. Psalm 91, 1 says, he who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Shaddai. Hoshea 14, 7 says, return to dwell in my shadow to live. They shall flourish like the grain. They shall blossom like the vine. Their fame shall be like the wine of Lebanon. And then Isaiah 49 to 8 says, My mouth was made to be like a sharpened blade while I was hidden in the shadow of a divine hand. So, you know, that's the image that I have pertaining to cell, the shadow. And you know, like I said, I just picture, you know, just God hovering over us or, and, and, you know, his, his beautiful wings, just holding us, his talit, just holding us within his, his embrace and protecting us. And on the, the talit, you know, are the, did it again, on the talit are, is the, the knots that show us the Torah, that teach us about the Torah. And, and um, just picture yourself embraced in that. Picture yourself covered in that. Picture yourself, you know, it's like, a, you know, just covered completely all around. God holds you in the cell, in the shadow. So... Seat, seat, and I didn't put the word down, but you can see the the tzadi, and I, you know, it's got the the hanging seat, seat there, the pictures. But Ecclesiastes seven sixteen says, "Do not be overly righteous, nor be overly wise. Why should you destroy yourself? 
I did write this other one down, but there's another one. Be, uh, do not be overly righteous or overly wicked. The Lord despises the extremes of both. So we need to find that balance within ourselves where, you know, we're not, we're not trying to be overly righteous. We're just wanting to eat and take in what God wants us to take in. And, and we can't judge others that aren't walking in the same path at the same time that we're walking in that path at, you know, um, at the same time. You know, we, if everybody's at a different place and we have to be able to realize that and be okay with it. Proverbs 10, 3 says, the Lord will not let the righteous go hungry, but he denies the wicked what they crave. There's another scripture. And again, I didn't put that one down, but it says, I've never seen the righteous forsaken or God's seed his people begging for bread. God always takes care of us. He always provides for us, but it, it is incumbent upon us. I mean, he's there for us, but it's incumbent upon us to get into the Torah and just, and just start eating the Torah, just start, you know, taking it in and living it and growing from it. And while we're doing that, God is constantly just taking care of us and he's providing for us and, and just watching over us. And it's amazing because, you know, um, Michael and I used to say this, um, excuse me, we had some really hard finances and at the time, you know, things were difficult, but what we said was, you know, it's a blessing that we get to experience that, not, not having at that time. It was really a blessing because not everybody gets, is afforded that opportunity to learn how to live with little. And I know there's going to come a time where, you know, some of you may experience that. And just realize that's a it is a blessing. You may not see it a, as a blessing at the time, but you're going to grow from it because you know um, you learn to live with little, and you learn to see if you know what God's taking care of you. You may not see it, you know, you don't know where it's coming from, but God's always taking care of you. And you'll later on look back and go, it's a blessing. I got to learn this, you know, when I was younger and I can still see God's provision even now. So the road to right, the road of righteousness leads to life by way of its path. There is no death. Proverbs 12, 28. So our choice of seeking after a righteous life, a righteous ways, studying Torah, learning Judaism, knowing God, having Yeshua in our life and the Holy Spirit moving through us. It leads to life. The way of the wicked is an abomination to the Lord, but he who he loves him who pursues righteousness. As difficult as things can be, as you're walking with the Torah and with the word and, and letting the Holy Spirit lead you, doing Judaism, you know, celebrating the festivals and Shabbat, looking for the new moon, all those things. They will give you so much joy because you're pursuing that righteousness. You're pursuing the things that, you know, Yeshua did while he was on earth. And, and 
it brings us life. It brings us life. The rabbis teach, I got this from Chabad. The rabbis teach, teach us that we are always to be aware of three things, an eye watching, an ear listening, and a hand writing. This means that everything we think, say, and do is recorded by God. And I'm sure you guys know that because, you know, we at Rosh Hashanah, we talk about the books, you know, the books and, and are, you know, being written in the book of life, but there's different books. So I just thought that was so cool because it's an eye watching, an ear listening, and a hand writing. This means that everything we think, say, and do is recorded by God, and we're held accountable for it. When we die, our soul stands before a heavenly court. We all go before God, right? At Rosh Hashanah, we, we all know that. And has to give an account for everything we've done. So my prayer for you is walk. Walk on the path of righteousness with the knowledge that, that God is there helping you to walk that path and that there is joy and life in walking in that path. So I wrote down this Psalm 119. I haven't done this with the other letters. I have looked at Psalm 119 because it does, you know, um, start with each letter of the alphabet. Well, the section for Tzadi is 119, 137 to 144. And I wanted to see how it, it um, used the word righteous there. So it says, the, first, the very first verse says, you are righteous, Lord, and your laws are right. So we see the Lord is righteous. The statues, statutes you have laid down are righteous. They are fully trustworthy. There's that trust again. My zeal wears me out for my enemies. Ignore your words. Your promises have been thoroughly tested and your servant loves them. Though I am lowly and despised, I do not this thing. <laughs> I don't know why it does that. Um, though I am lowly and despised, do not forget your precepts. Your righteousness is everlasting and your law is true. Trouble and distress have come upon me, but your commands give me delight. Your statutes are always righteous. Give me understanding that I may live. So the two things that it really says about, you know, that talks about what is righteous, the Lord is righteous. What is righteous? The statutes are righteous. So we know that, that righteousness is forever. It's everlasting. Righteousness is forever. The Lord is forever. The statutes are forever. And we need to live the life for we trust, for we trust the statutes. We trust their righteousness and we trust that God has given them to us. And um, like I said, they're always righteous. So those are the two things that it tells us straight off, you know, the Lord and the statutes. So seek those in your life, you know, to walk in a more, perfect way. Hillel used to say, be of the disciples of Aaron, loving peace and pursuing peace, loving mankind and drawing them close to the Torah. Pirkei Avot 112. So we as believers, we should be desiring loving peace, pursuing peace, loving mankind, everybody, and drawing them close to Torah. That's part of righteousness, drawing others towards that light. Shimon the Righteous would say, the world is supported by three things, Torah study, divine service, and good deeds. 
Now, divine service, they had there as like working in the temple, okay? But the world is supported by three things, Torah study, divine service, and good deeds. Pipkei Avot 1, 2. So each of us have that ability to go and study for ourselves, to sit and study for ourselves, do good deeds, give to others, help others, teach others. And then Shema used to say, make your study of the Torah a fixed practice. I, I know I quoted this last week with the pay, but I just think it is amazing. Okay, I vote 115. Make your study of the Torah a fixed practice. In other words, do it constantly. That's one of the most important things you can do in your life is study the Torah. Make it a, a, a regular practice of doing it. Speak little, but do much and receive all men with a pleasant countenance which is basically what Hillel said. And remember, Shammai was a, you know, I was under Hillel for a while until he went off on his own. So it's amazing because it's like, you know what? Study Torah. I'll do it again. <laughs> Study Torah. Speak little. And receive all men. And the same thing when Hillel said was, be disciples of Aaron. Love peace. Pursue peace and love mankind, drawing them to the Torah. So that's all I have for you today. But, you know, just try to try to look for the secret, the sod within the sadi, within the righteousness, within the tselem and the tsel. Try to look for that righteousness that you yourself have the ability to walk in those paths and seek after God. And it is through the study, mostly through the study and walking in God's ways that we'll be able to achieve that. And that's what I have for you today. So shalom, shalom, and have a good rest of the week.